subscribe to our youtube channel for in-depth interviews of india inc and press the bell icon so that you do not miss our updates Hello and welcome to Nirmal Bang, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Hilal Dadia. We have with us Mr. Rasel Narayan and Group CFO at Sun TV Network joining in. Welcome to the show, Mr. Narayan. And it's a pleasure to speak to you as well after so long. And I think it's always a pleasure right now to see people who've started work with all the kind of negatives that we've already passed through in the last three to four months. Literally with regards to COVID, I mean, there was no industry that has not been affected so far. And if you talk about media, television as a whole, the major concern was content creation. Forget about ad revenues as well. I mean, from where would we get content? And that was the biggest concern that all of us from the media space faced. What was your thought at that point in time? And how has that changed from the time we had the lockdown in the last week of March to now? Yeah, you're absolutely right. In fact, that was the biggest fear. And uh, fortunately for us, uh, you know, we had a lot of inventory of uh, movies and we also had a lot of these blockbuster serials. So the show just went on, although with recycled content. But the bigger worry at the back of everybody's minds was how do we keep this factory going? Because we need to keep creating new serials and new movies, new shows, just to keep the excitement alive because uh, not many people would like to watch the same stuff after a while. So as long as, you know, it was inevitable, it was fine. But I'm happy to say that uh, in all our languages, uh, the serial production is back. I mean, there are lots of uh, protocols that have been advised by the various state governments. So we are taking all those precautions and uh, the production of serials is in full blast now. Movies is a different kettle of fish because, uh, you know, if you have some 20 people working on a, on a soap, uh, a similar kind of uh, scene for a movie will entail close to 100 people or if not more. Mm. And uh, it is also packing a lot of people into a small space, especially if you are having some very dramatic scenes inside a hospital room or inside an office or inside, uh, you know, some closed space. It's always a risk to have a lot of people hovering around. And then you're also working with some, you know, mega stars. You can't afford to let them fall sick either. So movies uh, are in a bit of a tight spot, although I must say some movies have started during the uh, COVID situation, which means late March or early April, and they've been completed and they've been released also. Uh, it's, it's, it's spectacular the way some of these production houses have gone through this with complete compliance with whatever protocols that have been you know, advised by the respective state governments where the shoots took place. Mm. But that's very few and far between. I think one Malayalam movie, which is just released on Amazon Prime, See You Soon, was started post lockdown and it's just been released <laughs> for all the Prime video subscribers mm. a couple of days back. But those are very unusual kind of uh, examples. We have about... Uh, couple of movies which we started and which we suspended. One of them is starring uh, Mr. Rajnikanth, uh, which will be a blockbuster kind of a release. We thought it would be ready for Diwali of this year. I think it will now probably you know, spill over to the next year. Possibly Pongal is when that movie will come off. Uh, what I hear is uh, in Tamil Nadu, the movie shoots will resume by end of the current month. So, and I also see that people are taking this uh, a little more relaxed. I mean, the kind of fear that gripped people towards end of March, early April. I mean, that time it was a 
an unknown commodity. People thought it was going to be like some kind of plague and people will drop dead on the streets. Fortunately, nothing like that has happened. And also the mortality rate among the people who tested positive is also very low. And a lot of people are also recovering quickly between 10 days to two weeks. Mm -hmm. Uh, although the post recovery phase is, uh, I'm told, pretty painful for especially seniors. But the fear of COVID is gone because yesterday the state has opened up almost everything except uh, schools and movie theaters and malls. So temples are open and as usual, people are, you know, jostling over each other, getting to temples to pray. Uh, I mean, there is a fear that, you know, there may be a surge in infections. Uh, but uh, I think the fear is gone now. And that itself is a, is, is a great thing. Because I, I, I don't think the, the option of shutting down the economy was really an option for, especially India. Because, you know, people need to do danda and get their money. And without that, you know, the, the whole uh, wheels of commerce are going to come to a complete uh, standstill. So in that sense, we are happy that uh, it's almost business as usual mm. in terms of programming and uh, content, uh, except that we, we still haven't started movie shoots. Right. So, Mr. Narayanan, tell me one thing, you know, all of this, do you think from here on, we will see a rise in viewership because Q1 somewhere was like a washout for majority, but if we see the earnings as well, they have been better than what the street or even what the companies themselves were expecting on an overall basis. From here on, how long do you think we could come back to normalcy with regards to growth, with regards to viewership? See, growth will come back next year because it's a mathematical expression. Oh. Because uh, if, if this year uh, earnings take uh, beating by say 10%, and next year, we go back to last year's number. It's 11% growth. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> so growth numbers can be very misleading. Uh, but for the economy as a whole to grow more than what we achieved in FY20, I think it's some time away. Because if you look at our own numbers, Mm. Our first quarter advertisement revenues were down 64%. Right. Uh, I mean, at the end of April, we thought we were going to fall off a cliff. Mm. But May was slightly better. June was exceedingly better. Mm. But still, we, 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 we de-grew by 64%. Mm. And on subscription, we had absolutely no doubt because our subscription numbers have been firing on all cylinders. Absolutely. So we continue to grow at about 15, 16%. That part of the business is going to grow in the mid-teens uh, for the remainder of the year. And that really is going to save the day for Sun TV. Mm -hmm. Because that business produces revenue with very little cost because all the content costs have already been expensed. So right. whatever money that we make on subscription, has got a very high operating leverage. Mm. On the advertising side, uh, I think this year we will definitely degrow. Earlier I had said we'll degrow by at least 20%. I'm saying we'll grow, degrow by at least 25% now because uh, it's, it's, it's still not, uh, you know, normalcy on the advertising side. Mm. So if we, if we made 100 rupees last year on advertising, I think this year at best could be 75 rupees. Mm. But on the subscription side, if you made 100 last year, this year could be a minimum of 115. So in that sense, you know, some of the risks have been mitigated for us. Mm. The good news is our costs will be lower because no new movies are coming. Good. So we generally write off close to 450 crores as amortization, mm. satellite broadcast rights, because some TV charges off the entire satellite broadcast rights the day we show the movies on TV. Mm -hmm. Because there are no new movies coming, coming. that okay. amortization number will fall by at least half this year. So that is going to give us a significant boost in terms of our total costs. So I wouldn't be surprised if, and also IPL. I mean, we have this uh, IPL team, Sunrisers, Hyderabad. 
and we thought this was gone this year because there was no IPL uh, at least till about a couple of months back. Now, fortunately, it is starting in uh, Abu Dhabi and Dubai. Right. So we may make some decent sum of money on that. So net net, I'm not so worried about our earnings outlook. With a little luck, we may even post the same earnings as last year. Mm, mm, which, in a, which in a pandemic hit year is a spectacular achievement. Um, and next year is anybody's guess. Uh, something tells me that uh, you know everything will come back with a bang. Earnings, you know, product launches, new promotions, uh, new brand launches, extensions, and also there is this pent up demand. Like you know, if if you felt like buying a new phone you were worried about prospects, so you deferred your purchase. If you felt like buying a new refrigerator or a new flat panel TV, everything is getting deferred because people are very worried about what Alan Greenspan famously called as the wealth effect. Mm -hmm. uh, if, and when people don't feel wealthy enough, they don't spend. So the overall, the economy is, is taken a kind of a shrinkage which I think will reverse next year. We've seen this post Lehman Brothers also. So in the, in the six months after September 15 of 2008, there was so much of bad news and there was so much of pessimism. But the 12 months that followed March of 2009, we saw everything go through the roof. Right. Uh, so that uh, I think could play out uh, in this situation as well. So if that happens, FI22 will be a will be a very good year for not only for Sun TV but everybody in media and other industries. Absolutely. And that's the way we see it now. Right. And very interestingly, you know, when you talk about pent up demand as well, my interactions with a lot of consumption and consumer durable companies has actually given us indications right now that the kind of sales that have happened have been fabulous in terms of during lockdown periods as well because. The volume growth, if you see, of FMCG companies or, you know, I mean, people, I mean even durable companies, I mean, if you talk about television or washing machines, dishwashers, they've been literally out of stock at any of the retail outlets. So, I mean, it was a very different scenario that we actually witnessed in these things because everyone was sitting at home. People didn't really have anything to do. And probably, you know, if companies would have taken this in their stride, this probably could have been the best time for them to advertise as well. Because, I mean, one, one company which I have an example of who's done fabulous is Amul. They actually used this entire lockdown phase in their stride and they've gone gung-ho with their advertisements left, right, center. And, and that's given them results at least on their revenue front when I had a conversation with them. So I think that's something which we need to learn as well. Uh, from an ad marketing perspective that if you see a slowdown does not mean that, I mean, people are not going to stop eating. People are not going to stop, you know, staying in their homes and watching TV or something. So probably this is the best time to go out and advertise. But with this, Mr. Naranan, you, you know, you, you mentioned about uh, overall in terms of IPL as well. Do you think on the IPL front, on the content creation front, there is a possibility that the industry as a whole could see higher costs? No, uh, costs will be hugely down. Okay. Because uh, as I told you, even if you want to spend, mm. you're not able to spend mm. because uh, the new movies are not coming. Because that is our biggest purchase every year because that's, uh, our, that's our raw material. We, we buy satellite broadcast rights and digital uh, broadcast rights, streaming rights of all the movies especially Delhi uh, from Tamil and Kannada, Malayalam and Telugu. So very few movies are coming off the block mm. for a purchase. So therefore costs will be a lot lower this year. Mm. Right. And then we Even if you want to, because we have a lot of money now, we want to actually go and buy up, but there's nothing available to buy. Correct. So, so I mean, with the cash kitty that we have at Sun, I mean, we are cash rich right now. So any CAPEX plans from here on, what could the investments look like? See, our uh, CAPEX is really buying movies. That is, mm -hmm. uh, we have close to 11,000 movie titles. 
and that is really the the, the, the secret behind Sam's extremely high profit margins yeah. because these are all held at zero cost. The day we show it on our uh, prime time GZ channel, we write it off in full. So, and typically a movie can get milked anywhere between 10 to 20 years. Like, like some of the Rajnikan movies we bought in the late 90s, they still produce enormous amounts of revenue. And we also give them on dubbing rights to other channels they show in Hindi and Gujarati and all those. So it, it, it produces extraordinary revenue. So that's mm. our biggest capex. Mm. The second biggest capex is basically the serials that we produce. That's anywhere between 350 to 400 crores. Mm. And then we've now started uh, producing originals for our OTT platform, Sunnext. That will be about 150 crores. So 150 plus about 400, 550, 550 plus 450, about a thousand crores is really my capex, mm. which is my IP that I'm creating every year. Although we, we don't capitalize it, we hold it at zero cost. Mm. It, everything gets charged off. So that really is our capex. And other than that, uh, the routine capex, which is uh, changing computers and cars and, you know, cameras, mm. that's a very small number for us, about 30, 40 crores. That's all. Right. So, but in the coming year, any added investments that we will be making on the content side, especially if you have to look at Sun Next as well? Yeah, Sun Next, I think we'll be spending at least 150 crore per annum mm -hmm. on originals. Uh, so that, that, that will be the added investment that we'll make, apart from the movie rights, which I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Right. And apart from this, another, uh, you know, thing that's picking up right now, and there's a lot of debate in the movie and television industry with regards to where their releases on OTT platform go. What's the sense that you pick up on that front? Do you think, I mean, for me as in personally as well, a cinema experience is a cinema experience, or much ever I could want to watch something on the OTT platform right now. Do you think there is a possibility where producers will probably somewhere shift to the OTT platform apart from a few blockbusters or there's a possibility even blockbusters could shift to the OTT platform? You know, that's, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that thought is very, very attractive. You look at our own company, we mm -hmm. have about 18 and a half million uh, customers on Sunnext. We have about 12 million subscribers on Sun Direct, mm -hmm. which is a DTH. So between our OTT arm and our DTH arm, we have 30 million subscribers. Mm -hmm. So theoretically, if you produced a movie, a blockbuster movie, mm -hmm. with Dr. Rajnikanth and spent 200 crores making that movie, with 30 crore people, uh, I mean, sorry, three crore people, which you have the 30 million subscribers. If you could sell this for 100 rupees for a pay for view, you can make 300 crores. Mm. And 100 rupees for a pay for view for a blockbuster release starring someone like Rajni Gant with a five man, a five member family works out to 20 rupees a ticket. <laughs> So the economics look absolutely captivating. Uh, but my own sense is, no. like you just mentioned, people like to go to a multiplex. They'd like to go with their family. Okay. Kids would like to go to a, an arcade and play some games. You'd like to go to a food court and try some Chinese food or okay. uh, ice cream and then you watch a movie and then you come back home. That experience is something which families like because who likes to just sit up cooped in home and watch it on, it's not, I mean, not many people have big TVs. I mean, 72 inch TV or 19 inch TV. I mean, India is still a poor country. Very few people have home theaters that uh, will recreate that experience. So my, my hunch is uh, this may seem like a very attractive business idea at this time, 
to circumvent the entire distribution train and go straight into the home, disintermediating everything and uh, working up PPV models. But I'm not so convinced that we've reached that stage as yet. So do you think there's a possibility that if not a blockbuster movie, but at least in this times of COVID right now, instead of having a complete halt to the movie business, probably people will start looking at low budget movies right now Possible. and release them on OTT and keep the blockbusters for the cinemas because you don't know what the viewership is going to be at cinemas, what the footfall is going to be because the mindset of the people is not known yet and I think everyone's playing it by the T right now. I mean, I think for businesses also, to plan one year in advance is as difficult. I think you could just see why probably a month or two in advance right now. You're, you're absolutely right. See, uh, the beauty of uh, anything digital is it can be scaled and you can, you can go beyond the limits of geography. Mm. Look, at, look at the boxing uh, business, the sport of boxing. See, the typical ring is uh, just about you know, 10 by 10 or something. And it happens inside small, uh, you know, indoor stadiums in Las Vegas or, you know, Madison Square Garden. Not many people can sit and watch. But the boxing industry is so innovative. Mm. They do all these matches by PPV. Mm. They pay $100 for, uh, for a championship, uh, which may even be over in four or five minutes if there's a knockout. If, 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 if the fellow lands a blow and the fellow falls off, that $100 investment for a boxing match will be over in three, four minutes. Okay. But people spend this kind of money and five to six million Americans watch these matches, like especially these stars like Floyd Mayweather, Evander Holyfield and all these fellows. Winner gets 150 million, loser gets 100 million. The promoter makes the rest. And one match can generate a half a billion dollar revenue. All right. Similarly, live sports. If you look at English Premier League, Major League Baseball, NBA, IPL, world over, premium sports is where you can get this kind of money. Mm -hmm. So we may also see a stage where, you know, if like Irishman, which is, a, which is a movie that Netflix produced, it premiered on Netflix. Correct. Uh, so uh, it's quite possible that not just low budget movies, even big budget movies can actually come on this. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, whatever happens, we'll be ready because we have a captive base between Sunnext and Sun Direct. Correct. As I said, we have 30 million. And the moment we get into something like this, high quality content itself will draw more subscribers to us. Mm -hmm. and the content draws customers. Customers, absolutely. So with this, do you see a change in uh, strategy happening on the ad revenues as well between uh, digital versus television? Are you seeing that shift happening as well? I mean, are advertisements increasing on digital? My, my gut tells me uh, very few people want to watch ads. Absolutely. I mean, we want the skip button. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I think the way this industry is going to evolve, mm. very soon you'll have only subscription revenues for people like us. Mm. Because nobody wants to see ads. Absolutely. But, they, but these things will take some time in India because... How many people can afford a high quality broadband line in India? Mm. No wonder it has not gone beyond 6% penetration for the last three years. Correct. Because it will need at least a thousand rupees. If you watch four hours of television every day, you will need at least 350 to 400 gigabytes. Correct. And for a nice viewing experience, as good as what you get on cable or DTH, you will need a speed of at least 100 Mbps. Otherwise, you know, it will keep only, you know, that round thing you'll see and, and all that. So you pay 1,000 rupees for a broadband line. Then you pay 100 rupees to get IPL, another 100 rupees to get cricket abroad, mm -hmm. another 50 rupees to get regional content. 
you're looking at 1200 1300 rupees a month to get high quality streaming experience at home mm. to contrast that with the dth or a cable i mean your local cable operator will give you 400 channels for 300 rupees and if you want high definition he'll probably charge you 400 rupees but you'll get everything that you'd ever want for that 400 rupees and even if you watch 24 hours a day it will be only 400 rupees it will not be more like in broadband where you have to top up once you bust your limit so my point is there will always be a market for dth and cable which will be the mass market and if you're advertising toothpaste or detergent or uh, face powder you will forever be dependent on tv because nobody gives you this kind of volume i mean something week after week our park ratings show 1.1 to 1.2 billion impressions mm -hmm. you simply cannot get this kind of eyeballs with uh, digital right so so do you think something like what Jio is doing with their set-top boxes could become competition? No, at the end of the day, Jio is a partner for us because they are buying content from us. Right. Just as at hmm. the end of the day, you know, the telcos have got it right. They are saying that, you know, we will make sure that we offer everything to our customer. The customer signs up the service because he gets all these things bundled with the service mm. and the more content you offer the more data that they consume which is good right. for their ARPU. right i mean and, and i'll tell you my personal experience as well because we i was using hathway right now right. from hathway it's just been a day i mean two days probably where i've just got another geo connection and they've really bundled it up well you buy the geo internet connection with that, they're giving you the set-top box free. So automatically, you're enticed to at least start using the services to understand how the entire format works. So that bundling up is done really well. It is, it is, it is, it is actually that which has propelled our subscription revenues. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest uh, push for Sunnext came from MX Player for us. Correct. Like MX Player, if you're an MX Player user, Mm. In access to Sun Next. Correct, correct. So, this is, so, so that's how this whole business is. Uh, so, end of the day, the person who has content, he will monitor. He's going to be the king. Because, you know, not only Airtel, not only Vodafone, not only Geo, we are having a lot of other people also sourcing content from us. And mm. that really is the way this business is going to evolve. Right. So, so what is going to be the strategy to? Uh, prop up the digital business. Well, at the end of the day, if you have the right kind of content, it will take off on its own. Mm -hmm. I mean, every month we are adding subscribers and uh, mm -hmm. the number of minutes used is also going through the roof. In fact, we have a very good problem in Sunnex because the, the, the load has become so heavy, we are actually increasing our bandwidth. We are investing more in the storage and uh, I think same time next year, we'll probably double the subscriber count. Right. And on the subscription front as well, do we see any impact with regards to TREI's directive on uh, NTO 2.0? See, that is something which is unfortunate because uh, mm -hmm. unfortunately, India is the only country where they are trying to put price control. Correct. Nowhere in the world you have a price control on what, like I said, told you this boxing example. Mm. It's hundred dollars for a fight. Take it or leave it. I mean, uh, so, the day before Diwali, uh, a ticket from Bombay to Delhi will probably sell for 40,000 bucks. Mm. Take it or leave it. Nobody is uh, forcing you. So we need to move to a situation where there is complete, you know, free market economics because mm. at the end of the day, if you have high quality content, you'll get high quality customers. Correct. Uh, so my own view is this is something which is very retrograde trying to put. But I think the impact will be least on Sun because uh, we don't have anything which is priced mm -hmm. out of whack. And uh, uh, we think that uh, we'll be able to 
you know, protect our arpoos. Mm. Because at the end of the day, nobody is trying to build a business model just by maximizing price per channel. Correct. Our idea is, you know, if you're a, if you're a customer in Tamil Nadu, I'd like to give you a GEC channel. I'd like to give you a movie channel, a news channel, a comedy channel, a mm. kids channel, and a set second GEC channel which gives you a different kind of programming yeah. and if I can get 30-40 rupees for this, 30 to 40 rupees is our ideal range, I am happy and uh, that's the way we have built the entire business. So my understanding of the situation on the ground, even if NTO 2.0 were to become law, yeah. we will not have any impact. But I, but I seriously hope that there is a rethink on this because the experience last time was absolutely, uh, you know, unprecedented. Mm. What started off as something which was to help customers ended up creating a much higher bill for the customers. Because right. at the end of the day, uh, you know, the, the, the regulation forced us to price every channel. Mm. And very soon the customers found that they wanted more than just one or two channels. Mm. So earlier they were getting something for free. Now they ended up buying them for a price. Right. Uh, so, you know, if they were paying 500 rupees, it went to 700, 750 rupees. Mm. So the consequences were completely unprecedented. Mm. And within one year, you're again trying to reinvent the wheel. Uh, my own personal view is uh, it should be left to the broadcasters. At the end of the day, no broadcaster wants to build a business uh, which is high priced, high margins with very little of customers. Wow. Every broadcaster wants to broad base his market, build market share and build a solid business with multiple revenue streams. Okay. So, uh, it's, it's, and, and water will find its own level. End of the day. I mean, you look at uh, airfares today. Hmm. It's, it's got one of the lowest air fares in the world and that's happened only because of competition. Right. And Mr. Narayan, overall, if you have to see in terms of television, digital, we are seeing a comeback to pre-COVID levels somewhere. Radio, the anticipation was that it would be the last one to see a comeback right now. Now, newspapers have started doing well, but still physical copies are not being accepted by readers as often right now. So with regards to the radio business as well, how long do you think will it take to come back to normalcy? Because again, transportation has started in some way. Private vehicles have started to move out. Do you think it will be earlier than anticipated? I, I have no idea. Uh, I think radio will be the last to come back. Mm -hmm. My own personal view is many radio stations will file for bank. I think same time next year, at least 50% of the radio stations will be gone. Mm. Because many of them are very poorly capitalized and nobody is spending on radio ads. Mm. And you have to pay the license fee, which is very, very stiff. Uh, I mean, it's 4% revenue share is the license fee or 2.5% of the original license amount that you paid. In many cases, the 2.5% is many times the 4%. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you know, even without revenues, a lot of people are paying humongous sums as license fee. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I'm aware that some of the radio stations are up for sale. Uh, but even the larger players like ourselves are not rushing in to buy them because uh, there is very little opportunity in the foreseeable future. Mm. So my, my, my fear is a lot of radio stations will simply fold up. Right. And overall in terms of, you know, the sectors which are advertising, yes, FMCG and pharma, probably hospitals, insurance companies, these are the ones who have been on an uptrend right now in, in times of lockdown. Are you seeing a comeback with auto companies, e-commerce players, especially on the back of the festive season. And a lot of rural-centric, you know, companies are the ones who are making a comeback. Are you seeing that also as a trend? 
uh, I see a lot of auto companies uh, advertising heavily on our channels. Mm. We're also seeing uh, online education, uh, online, um, you know, uh, e-commerce uh, options. In fact, some of the OTT streaming mm. companies are advertising on regular TV now. Uh, so, so we're seeing a lot of that. Um, and you, as you rightly said, the pharma companies, uh, health insurance companies, mm. all these things have become very relevant now in view of what's happened. So we are seeing a, a, a broad brush. What has not uh, happened uh, as yet is our traditional retailer companies. We have a lot of these large format retail companies in Tamil Nadu, people like Sarona stores and the silk saris. I mean, some of these silk sari companies on a standalone basis, they have five to 600 crores in revenues. Mm. And they spend a lot of money on our channels. Um, some of them are the heaviest advertisers on uh, our Tamil channels. Mm. So those people are, uh, are now completely out because their stores are not open because they are these large format uh, mall-like stores. So they're still shut. So it will take some time for those uh, people also to come back, but auto certainly has come back. Right. I think a textile, jewelry, all this as a space will take some time because people are deferring marriages. I mean, people are not really venturing out, so they don't know where to wear clothes and go. So in spite of all the discounts that are pouring in right now, no one really wants to shop. But hopefully, I think everything should make a comeback soon. Thank you so much, Mr. Narayanan, for joining us on the show. I hope you enjoyed the conversation as well. Yes, and we will see you back once again very soon once things again open up more than this. Thank you, Thank you so much for being here and stay safe. Uh...